Hi, my name is David Lee. I'm Gresford Thomas. And I'm Cameron Haley, and we're going to be talking about some 19th century uh, works of art with you today, around the turn of the 19th century, actually. David, tell us about your piece. All right, so the first piece we have is by Monet, and it's entitled Impressionist Sunrise. Now, my question is to someone first looking at this is, what do you see when you look at it? Maybe camera. Why is it so airy? Get the lights. <laughs> well, the reason for the airiness was to describe the time setting of it. This Monet painted this around the time of the Industrial Revolution. So if you look into the back, if you look, you see it's a dark color of a blue with like the top of being just a little bit of orange. It's a sign of maybe just a turn of the century or maybe the end of the conclusion. So you think like smokestacks from like factories and things that are rising up yes. about this time? Yes. Cool. Interesting. Very cool. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm no expert on art, but, you know, that, I think that's the sun back there, that orb in the background. Can you tell me more about that? The sun could represent several things, but the one thing that sticks out to me, it's a beacon of hope. Ah. I mean, at first it does look like a sun, but a beacon of hope, I think, would be the more relevant term to this, because this is after after France was going through turmoil and just recovering from previous conflicts. So, so it's not like a giant orange in an orange orchard that we can see like through the, no, the midst there, no? I think the better interpretation is it's a beacon of hope. If you notice the person, the, the man in the boat down there, it's kind of hard to see, but it could be that he's looking up to the sun, which means he is a faithful person, maybe? Interesting. And I can kind of see what you're talking about with the hope because the boat is kind of, it's, it's dark. It kind of gives a, an air of being uh, in the darkness, in the background. And, and there you have uh, way off the, the, the sun, the orb, so bright, a beacon of hope just um, there letting them know that there's something that they can be looking forward to. Mm -hmm. oh, that's excellent. Yes. Hope that air pollution will not prevail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gresford, why don't you tell us a little bit about your piece? Well, um, what we're looking at is a bar at the Boilers Bergeres. That's my best French impression. Very nice. <laughs> Your impression of a Frenchman. Yeah, my impression of a Frenchman, exactly. It's a, it's a great triumph in Impressionism because um, it was painted by um, Edouard Manet, not Monet, Manet. And um, what, we find that it was what we find is that it was completed in 1882 during the last two years of his life. He was suffering from uh, syphilis. Manet was a player. Uh, which, <laughs> which would eventually kill him. Now, what I find amazing and interesting is that he was able to depict on canvas, uh, despite, on, despite being sick, the harmonious uh, balance of grays and, and blacks and flesh-colored tints that are accentuated by rich colors depicted with the fruit and flowers. I didn't just make that up. I had to write that down, by the way. Oh, very nice. Very <laughs> nice, nice commentary. Nice. I like it. I like it. So, so tell me, what do you, what do you uh, see interesting about this uh, painting, about this work? Well, first thing I see is woman, center of a canvas, and my recollection is during this time, women are mostly being like housewives, mainly, and she's in a bar surrounded by alcohol. Ooh, risque. Yeah, that's a little risque. That, that's, that's true. Um, and, and what's interesting about it is her, her gaze. Her gaze is, is it's very set. It's very, um, almost like she's, she's gazing into the, the eyes of the person that is, that is at the bar. But, she's but, a bit of a player, too, yeah, huh? It may be. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but there's something else that I want you to take a look and, and see about the reflection, perhaps? Yeah, why is there two women, it seems like? Because the mirror is behind her. But it seems like there's someone else standing next to her. Right, right. You see, what, what we see here is, is kind of a contradiction. You see the barmaid's figure, it, it's reflected to show that she's standing straight, but the reflection looks like she's standing off to the side. Um, and that, what we see is that there's a man off into the background where, you know, the man oh. there with the snazzy top hat. Yeah, love what, interest. Very. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps love interest. But what we see is that he is far, farther from the mirror than the barmaid and yet his head is about the same size. So there's, there's, a, there's a perspective issue going on here. And, and if you mm. examine the mirror image and compare it to what 
what you imagine the actual image should reflect, it seems like there's a separate scene occurring within the mirror. So we have multiple points of perspective here. So not Very just interesting. viewing the pers person from the woman's perspective, but also different angles. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Manet does an excellent job of distorting the actual and the reflection. He's a master of that, don't you think? I think so. I think so. Um, kind of talking about reflections, uh, I'd like to tell you guys a little bit more about uh, my work of art. Uh, this is a self-portrait of Gauguin done in 1889. And it's interesting uh, that uh, we've been talking about Impressionism and this movement of art that's going on uh, during the uh, turn of the 19th century. And Mo uh, Manet actually um, describes mm -hmm. this as a time where people could paint anything, uh, anything they want to. I can see that. Um, yes, very. And my question, I guess, is when you're free to paint anything, you're not tied down to church themes anymore, you're not tied down to old Greek mythology, why would you choose to paint a picture of yourself? And, of course, this does have some themes uh, and imagery that do go back to biblical themes and maybe even some Greek mythology, um, but why would he put himself in such imagery? Is he trying just to get his face out there to be popular? I, I don't know. I mean, he looks like he wants to hurt somebody. He looks at a, he's got kind of like a come at me bro type of thing going on. Um, yeah, it's an interesting stare, interesting gaze that he has there. And that, and that whole halo action going on there, you know, it's an interesting question. Why would you want to paint yourself, and not just paint yourself, but paint yourself in such a, an abstract manner, if you will. Definitely. And there's some contradictory symbols going on there, too. You have the halo going on, and... Uh, if you look very closely, this uh, flower-like looking thing has kind of a snake head uh, on, on the end of it. And so um, these are very classic symbols for, uh, for good and evil. Oh, I see. And mm. this really captures um, the struggle that Gauguin had um, through his art, with mm -hmm. his identity. Mm. Gauguin um, was someone who struggled throughout his life um, with the person that uh, he saw himself as. Mm -hmm. And this is because... He had roots in um, a very, um, very Native American type of culture, as well as um, a bourgeoisie French culture. His father was from the French culture, and his mother uh, was born in Lima, Peru. And so he had maybe even some connections um, to the Incan Indians that were there. And so he struggled with this concept of uh, civilized society versus the savage and we can see that, I think, very deeply reflected in his art. Um, and Gauguin's image of himself, um, we can see changes very drastically throughout his, um, his time of doing art. Uh, we can see this uh, portrait of himself done in 1876 is very different than, Quite different. Uh, than very. the portrait of him done in 1889. Um, and this is actually just after he uh, divorced uh, his wife, who was actually the daughter of a Protestant minister. Mm. And Gauguin really struggled with uh, the restraints he felt that uh, mo moral civilized society placed on him. Right. He didn't feel like it expressed some of the rough um, experiences he had gone through in his life. He was a sailor in the Navy. Um, and also, he again reflected back to his roots and his heritage um, with uh, maybe perhaps the Incan Indians um, in the New World. A complex man. Very complex man, and his art reflects it. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> so, so yeah, he's trying to find a balance between his two cultures. And Definitely. And in the last image, you can tell the con contrast, with, like the yellow and the red. Correct. A balance, whereas the previous image is him just professional looking. Very, very true. His um, color palette moves from being very muted to very vibrant and bright, and he uses color um, to, to really capture that because uh, color to the symbolists, as uh, the art in his uh, art movement would come to be known as, um, was very highly praised over form because color had greater suggestive power. And to the symbolists, it was more important to capture suggestion versus realism that even Impressionism was still kind of trying to hold on to. It's almost like he's uh, telling a story. He is. With, with he's contrast. telling his life story. Yeah, he's telling his yeah. life story. So we can see, I think, as we compare uh, all of our pieces, that um, 
we can see there's there's kind of a tension between the real and the symbolic going on at the turn of the 19th mm, century. Yes, yes. Because it's evolving from something just abstract, like a scenery almost, mm -hmm. to some to a picture of a person, mm -hmm. which is something that we can associate with. Very true, very true. Um, and bring our own subjective meanings even to it, rather than just something that's very objective, like a scenery. But, I, I would agree. I would yeah, agree. totally. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you guys. Uh, loved your pieces. Um, and I hope that we can do this again sometime. Pleasure's been all mine. Yeah. Great. Thank you.